we've heard a lot of talk about different colors of hydrogen, different types of hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen from natural gas is really the most uh, onerous hydrogen that most people are very concerned about. And blue hydrogen or hydrogen with carbon sequestration marries that natural gas usage to a new technology that other concerns are raised about and is still not quite mature enough to really depend on. What we really talk about and what we want is hydrogen from truly zero emission sources. Uh, suffice it to say, however, this is not different than the electricity question. Um, we want electricity that comes from clean sources as well. And as we look across the United States, we see there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, running an EV in Washington state is going to have a very different impact than running it in Kentucky, for example. And this is just to draw that parallel that what we're talking about is the source of that energy. Um, let's dive into this a little bit and have a bit of fun. Uh, a one way to understand this is with the different colors of electricity. So uh, brown or, or black electricity is electricity that comes from coal. It has high carbon content. We don't want it in California. Pink electricity comes from nuclear. That has no carbon, but it's got a waste stream, and therefore we don't want that in California either. Turquoise electricity from electrolysis or from incineration or pyrolysis has a variable content. That's like incineration, not what we're looking for. Gray electricity, that's good old natural gas. That's our baseline. We're only going to allow that for a little while. Natural gas with CCS, call it blue, yellow from solar, green from solar, wind, hydro, or biogenic. We use some of that, but for renewable, we don't use the large, large hydro. Uh, is that useful? No, it, it's really not. Um, it's confusing. And it draws my point, which is it's about the source. It's not about the electrons. And it's not about the, the H2 molecule either. We can think about this as we move renewable energy around. If we have wind, sun, wind, solar, or geothermal, we can put it on the grid as electricity and use it in battery electric vehicles, or we can turn it into hydrogen with electrolyzers, use it in fuel cell electric vehicles. Biogenic methane, which has gotten a lot of attention lately, or renewable natural gas, we can use in thermal power plants and put it on the grid. And we do that a lot in CHP plants in, in California, or we can use steam methane reformation and turn it into hydrogen. The point here, is that the real area of concern is that source. Whether or not you like biogenic methane or renewable natural gas really is a separate question than when you, whether you want energy over the grid or with hydrogen. There's a lot of good reasons why we don't want to electrify everything with the grid. Equity is one of those. The cost of doubling the, transmission, the electrical and transmission grid has to be apportioned by the utilities. And it's going to be a tough job to get that right so that communities that aren't benefiting are not paying for it. Wildfire prevention is a huge one. Last year, over 25% more CO2 came from wildfires than from fossil fuel use. That's terrifying, and that's gonna go on until our climate rights itself. Uh, energy collection from remote renewables, hydrogen works very well without putting up new high tension lines, uh, new electrical installations. If you're going for deserts or offshore wind, it's a great way to collect that electricity. It adds to resiliency because it's intrinsically storing energy. It frees truckers from infrastructure. You can't have a one megawatt recharger at home if you're an independent uh, owner operator. Having fast public fueling stations is possible with hydrogen. Life cycle sustainability, very compatible with recyclability. I could go on and on about that. Uh, land use, we can transport over the road, replace natural gas pipelines and not need to put in these new rights of way. Effective use of available funds. We need to use every option that we have. Long duration storage has talked a lot. Uh, distributed control of power, not one entity can flip the switch. And we've seen both governmental and business entities acting with varying degrees of responsibility. We want it to be more democratic. And speed of deployment, every arrow in the quiver. So the question is, doesn't most hydrogen come from fossil fuel? Well, this chart from the Department of Energy shows sources on the left and uses on the right. And if you look on the left, Holy crap, there it is. Yeah, it's mostly coming from natural gas and coal. And if you look over on the right, it's used for refining and ammonia. Talk about a basket of deplorables. This is awful. Well, let's look a little more closely for transportation. Now we're getting less than 0.3 uh, million tons of hydrogen produced from renewables. But if you look on the other side, we're using less than 0.01 for transportation. 
Uh, and that's mostly coming from California, uh, from the hydrogen that's being used for the projects here. Is this a problem or is this a decarbonity? Uh, one area to look at is that refining area. So here's an example to kind of illustrate a way that we can use hydrogen to transition us over to zero uh, carbon. So California used about 4 billion gallons of diesel in 2015. That's the newest number I could get. The way they use it is to pull out the sulfur. Right? They take natural gas, they strip it in steam methane reforming that causes CO2, and they use that hydrogen for diesel. That makes about the same amount of CO2 as 8,000 Class 8 diesel trucks. That sucks. Um, but there's something else we could do. We could get that hydrogen from renewables. Let's get it from solar and wind. If we had about 560 megawatts of power, we could electrolyze it, make that same amount of hydrogen, and we would offset immediately that 8,000 truck worth of CO2 emissions. Well, wait a minute, we're not gonna use diesel anymore. Diesel's awful, yes. And we're going to taper off as well. So as we stop using diesel, now we've put in large scale hydrogen, green carbon free hydrogen, which becomes cheap at large scale. And we can taper that as we go down with diesel use, we go up with fuel cell truck use, and we end up reducing the emission equivalent of about 12,000 trucks. Well, that's pretty cool. And that's actually about 40% of what we need to do for the advanced clean truck regulation. Throw in another 6,000 battery electric trucks and we're there. And those would take about the same amount of power. Um, and this is happening. It's happening all over the world. Up in Quebec, they're using hydropower to make hydrogen uh, flood power. Our friendly competitors are making very large renewable hydrogen installations in New York, Washington, in Georgia. Lindy's building uh, special green hydrogen production for industry. Air Liquide in Germany doing the same thing for refineries. Everfuel doing that as well. This is happening. It's happening today. And it's dropping the cost of hydrogen. And in fact, uh, Secretary Granholm announced the DOE's, the first DOE earth shot to get $1 per kilogram renewable green carbon free hydrogen by the end of this decade. And it's achievable and it's doable and it's something that we believe in and it's our reason to be in business. We also wanna draw a point, I wanna just quickly talk about what we have to look towards and that's embedded in energy. As we talk about the full system, let's talk about beginning and end of life as well. And fuel cells, as I mentioned, have a very good recycling footprint and can actually reduce embedded carbon emissions through their use in, in fuel cell electric vehicles. So I just wanna say that this work results not only from 40 years of hard work, but from a very diverse and inclusive group of individuals dedicated to decarbonization. And being based up in Vancouver, this just lends itself to a global multicultural community that's, that's built this work. And, and we hope to participate in decarbonizing and, and helping with this, this important work. Thank you very much.